Hi there. This is Sue Johnson. That would be me. And I'm offering yet something else on my channel. So this one is about Tunisian crochet, which is something a friend of mine mentioned to me once. And the name stuck. Uh, Tunisian. What does that mean? And I researched it and there seems to be no discernible uh, point of origin. And it can also be called... Um, Afghan crochet and I'm not exactly sure why except that probably using this long crochet hook which is about 12 inches long and keeping all your stitches on there it's probably easier to make a blanket than it is to do anything else but there is a way to increase and decrease anyway my point is I thought I would try it out so that's what this video is about in the meantime take a look at this this is my constant companion, no matter what I'm doing. She talks with her tail. Right, Bailey? Yeah, yes, that's it. There goes the tail. Anyway, this is my Bailey cat. And whatever I'm doing creatively or creative-wise, she's hanging out with me. Right, Bailey? Okay. Then you, what do you do most of the time, Bailey? You sleep? Yep, you sleep, right? Isn't that right, Bailey? Yes, sir. I thought I would note here that I'm using a number four worsted white wool and a number four crochet hook. The kind of wool that you use can make or break your success rate. This wool was easy to use, easy to find the spaces to pull through. And it just was very, I want to say forgiving, um, but it was very easy to work with. I worked with some other wool that was thinner. And as you're going along, it was really difficult to find the correct spacing and get the right number of stitches on the hook. So the kind of wool you use can make a difference. Make it easy for yourself. I'd also like to note that the video you're watching here was my very first attempt at the Tunisian crocheting. I had not yet purchased an official long hook, crochet hook for Tunisian crocheting. What I did is I cast on 18 stitches on a regular crochet hook. Once I had uh, finished this little piece, I did go out and buy a proper Tunisian hook, which is about a foot long and it has a knob on the end so that your stitches don't fall off the end of your hook. It's a little bit more tricky learning how to manage that type of hook, but you know what they say, practice makes perfect. So the more you do it, the more your skill develops. And with that, you gain a sense of success and satisfaction that you've created something.
One thing I want to add about being creative is that you don't have to be an expert in whatever catches your fancy, whatever you feel that you might like to try. The point is to get out there and try it because when you engage in creative aspects or endeavors, you discover things about yourself. For example, you might discover that you're a very patient person or not, or that you like challenge or that certain activities are actually very relaxing for you, which can be an anxiety and stress relieving activity. There are a lot of health benefits to being creative or engaging in creative activities. So get out there, find something and try it. Even if you think, oh, I can't do that. It doesn't matter. Just try it, try it and find out and discover just who you are and what you can do. <laughs> Bye for now. Thank you.